Welcome to worship with Our Savior's Lutheran Church from Rochester, Minnesota. To start our worship today, let's share our highs and lows.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant love of God. God who searches us and knows us. You have shown us what is good, but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sin, and the broken systems that blind and bind us. We distrust those who are not like us. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We exploit the earth and its resources, failing to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Open our eyes and our hearts to reveal your love and mercy and guidance. Amen. You have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the promises of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and spirits, reconciling peace. Thanks be to God. people of Our Savior's Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Emily Carson, and I'm so thankful to be with you on Bold Women's Sunday. Our gospel text for this morning comes from Luke, the seventh chapter, from the 36th verse through the eighth chapter, the third verse. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city, who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors. One owned 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now, which of them will love him more? 
Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then, turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one for whom little is forgiven loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Soon afterwards, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, people of Our Savior's Lutheran Church. As I mentioned before reading the Gospel, I'm Pastor Emily Carson. I'm honored and delighted to be with you today for Bold Women Sunday. I serve as a member of your Synod staff and the staff of the churchwide expression of our denomination. I bring you greetings today on behalf of our Bishop, Bishop Regina Hassanali, and our Synod staff, and our Synod Council, of which Pastor Ben is a member. I also say a word of gratitude up front for the leadership of your pastors, Pastor Ben and Pastor Nikki, as they share their gifts with you and with the wider community. We give thanks for their presence within the Synod and within the Zumbro River Conference. Today we celebrate bold women, and we celebrate boldness as it relates to a life of faith. As we celebrate boldness, we get to journey today with the woman from our gospel readings, the unnamed woman in Luke chapter 7 who boldly expresses her heart and gratitude to Jesus, and the named women mentioned at the beginning of Luke chapter 8 who boldly follow and boldly financially give in order to support Jesus' ministry. In order to fully celebrate boldness and bold women, and specifically the women in our gospel readings, let's first take a little time this morning to explore what this boldness business is all about. What is boldness, and why does Jesus encourage and celebrate it? Boldness is sometimes misunderstood by many of us, myself included. I used to have some negative stereotypes about boldness. I thought that maybe it meant being disruptive or loud or impolite. I mistakenly thought that being bold was being unnecessarily dominant and squishing other people along the way. But that isn't what biblical boldness is about at all. So let's dig in. What is biblical boldness? Boldness shows up as an attitude of God's people in the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. And there are a few Hebrew in the Old Testament and Greek in the New Testament words that we translate as bold in English. Let's focus on two of those Greek words that we translate as bold. The two Greek words are talmeo and parousia. Talmeo and Parousia. In the New Testament, we encounter the boldness of Joseph of Arimathea in Mark chapter 15 when he asks Pilate for the body of Jesus after Jesus has been crucified. In Mark 15 verse 43, we learn that Joseph went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. The Greek word here is Talmeo and it means to actively gather up courage in order to take meaningful action. Boldness, in this case, is actively gathering up courage in order to take meaningful action. 
Peter, John, Paul, and Barabbas are all described in the book of Acts as operating with boldness on multiple occasions. And they are speaking God's word with boldness on multiple occasions, as are Jesus' followers in the book of Acts. An example of this is Acts chapter 4, verse 31, which states, When they prayed, the place in which they gathered was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. The kind of boldness here is about speaking, speaking freely and confidently. It's fearlessness and courage. When people in the Old and New Testament acted boldly, they weren't getting stuck in overthinking, overanalyzing, overwhelm, or their own insecurities. Instead, their boldness was rooted in courage and wholehearted action as they navigated life. They speak bravely and act in ways that reflect the profound grace of God. When we celebrate bold women and biblical boldness, this is what we're being invited into. At the center of our gospel for today is a woman whose name I sure wish we knew. We never learn her name and she never speaks, but her bold actions her bold response to Jesus has been retold for millennia. By Luke chapter 7, at this point in Luke's gospel, it's still pretty early on in Jesus' ministry, and he's been invited to the home of a religious person. And a woman comes, the woman at the center of our gospel today, she comes into the house of this religious person with a jar of special ointment. It was common in those days that if you invited a teacher into your home, like the way this religious person invited Jesus into his home, it was common that you would invite others from the community to come too. It would be sort of an open door so that more people might be able to benefit from the teachings. That's probably how this woman ended up there. She perhaps heard Jesus preaching and teaching in the days and weeks prior. Maybe she'd witnessed a healing, the healing perhaps of her own family member. The unnamed woman Let's call her parousia, which means boldness in Greek. She enters the space without fear and boldly expresses her gratitude to Jesus. At the time, it would have been typical for someone to have washed Jesus' feet as he entered that home, a common act of hospitality. But apparently it didn't happen until the woman, who we're calling parousia, boldly attends to Jesus' feet. A kiss of welcome would have also been a common gesture of hospitality, but that also hadn't happened until Parousia kisses Jesus' feet. And anointing with oil, another common gesture of hospitality, also had not happened until the woman of our gospel text anoints Jesus' feet with her special ointment. Jesus uses the experience to expand the awareness of everybody present in that house. They were all mystified by the woman's presence and her actions and Jesus' initial lack of a response. And Jesus helps them to recognize that the woman acts with boldness and love because she has a special understanding of who Jesus is and what his compassion and what his forgiveness means for her life. As the gospel continues into Luke chapter 8, we see the names of more bold women. These are women whose encounters with Jesus transformed their lives in such a way that they boldly followed him and also boldly gave of their finances and their resources to support the expansion of his public ministry. People of Our Savior's Lutheran Church, since 1948, the beginning of the life of your congregation, you've been boldly welcoming and loving and serving in Jesus' name. You are bold, and you have a history of boldness as you've been living out your mission to proclaim God's love and grace through Christ as you relate to one another and the world. You worship with boldness, you experiment with boldness, you welcome with boldness, you give and you serve 
with boldness. As you travel on in what is certainly a unique time to be the church, may the Holy Spirit inspire within you continued parousia, continued boldness, individually and collectively. Boldness is transformational, and that's why we celebrate bold women and boldness today. May we celebrate boldness when we witness it. May we lean toward boldness when we feel it bubbling up. And may we give thanks for the Holy Spirit, that force from which all courage comes. Amen. United with the whole church across time and space, let us join our confession with theirs using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. God of generations, we celebrate the lives of the women who fought the good fight and stood up for the gospel and the truth of Scripture yesterday and today. Strengthen our voice of proclamation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we give thanks for the bold women among us today who serve with a sense of holy purpose. Inspire us to encourage one another in fellowship, laughter, hospitality, and sharing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the men throughout the ages who support and encourage women in their quest to use their God-given gifts for your purpose. 
Give us courage to work together as equals to proclaim your grace and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our greatest friend, surround us with your love and affirmation through the kindness of others, be they friend or stranger, young or old. Give us eyes to see the love you lavish on all your people. Make us bold to speak your truth and act on behalf of your kingdom with courage and strength of purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of understanding, give us courage to stand up for the abused, the needy, the sick, the poor, and the stranger. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, that you might bring healing and comfort. We pray especially for Arliss, Sean, Merle, Karen, Magnus, David, Bob, Francis, Byron, Lois, Mark, Jeanette, Bonnie, Marcia, Connie, Mike and Sandy, and those we name now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you so much for your continued generosity and support of our congregation's ministry. You have enabled our Savior to continue sharing Christ's love and growing in our faith, connecting our faith with our lives. You are invited to continue living into the faith practices of giving to the ministry that God has called us to. You may give online through our website by participating in the automated Simply Giving program or by mailing your gift to the church office. Again, Thank you for your continued generosity and for the love of Christ that you share with the world. My name is Emily Blaine and my family moved to Rochester um, right around four years ago now. And it took us a while to you know, find a church like it usually does when you move. Um, we tried a couple different churches. I honestly don't remember where our saviors fit in the three that we went to, but one of the churches that we checked out, worship was great, we appreciated the pastors, but our then almost one-year-old daughter, Rebecca, or I guess she, yeah, she was right around one-year-old, um, she was studiously ignored, is what I say. We had her in church with us because that's what we did and you know she was making noise not a lot of noise but just a little bit and it felt like people nobody gave us any dirty looks there was nothing overtly negative but it was a lot of you know blinders like we're not we're just gonna not not pay attention to the kid noises back there which just didn't quite feel right to us another church we went to we liked quite a bit we didn't have a chance to meet the pastor because he was on sabbatical at the time and so we we're like oh maybe we'll go back there and then we got to our saviors <laughs> And I don't think it's, I don't think we're the only family who had this experience where we walked in and went, wow, they have tables out here for the kids. There's, you know, coloring materials, there's dolls, there's, you know, little kid Bibles. This is pretty cool. And we sat down and the woman sitting in front of us turned around and said, oh, welcome. I haven't seen you here before. I have a granddaughter right about your daughter's age. You know, welcome. And we chatted just a little bit and went, this feels good and got through the service, didn't feel studiously ignored, felt very welcomed. And then Pastor Ben got to the sermon and made a Dungeons and Dragons reference. And Jacob and I play Dungeons and Dragons and are huge nerds in all sense of the word, as obviously Pastor Ben is as well. And so we're like, well, this feels pretty darn right. And so we chatted with Ben afterwards and went, wow, they value music here. I was a music major. Jacob would have been a music major if he had been able to figure out how to play piano. Um, so music is really important to both of us. 
our child is welcomed here, which was really important to both of us. Um, the pastor is a nerd, which was not something we realized was important, but we were like, this is really cool. This is just an extra layer of connection. Um, and now in the couple of years since we became members, the community has been really important, especially over the last two years of the pandemic. It's been really, really nice to have our parents of young kid Bible study, funky bunch group, whatever. We've been meeting regularly on Zoom and then outside for a little bit last um, spring and over the summer, which is really nice to see people. Um, but we've been meeting regularly every two weeks and we've gone from reading a book together and talking about that, reading the Bible together to kind of in the depths of last winter when it was really bad for everybody, just having a time to just be together and talk about, oh my gosh, life is so hard right now. And just be with people who you know would understand. Um, and we really appreciate, I know our family appreciates the care that leadership at Our Saviors has put into all the COVID protocols, which nobody likes. Nobody wants to be sitting at home on the couch. We want to be in person together, but having that option so that, you know, whether it's because of COVID or in the future when hopefully it's not because of COVID, having that option of, oh, we're on vacation, but we could still tune in online and see what's going on at church or, you know, life is just really busy or, you know, kid activities on Sunday morning, which keep happening despite the fact that many of us obviously aren't big fans of that. So we can't be there live on Sunday morning, but we can still be connected to our church community and be connected to that the faith that we have that we share and the mission that we have together um i'm really excited about this next year and growing gift and growing that online community like i said those have been pretty important to us and so when we talked about that at the congregational meeting i was like oh that sounds really exciting i can't wait um i started thinking about you know, who who do we know who's not really plugged into a church who can we share that with so we're pretty excited about this year to come Thank you for joining us for worship today. We are thankful that the Reverend Emily Carson from our Synod office was able to join us for worship today, preaching as we celebrate bold women today. I have a couple other announcements to highlight for you. The first is that um, because COVID cases have come down significantly, the leadership team has made some decisions on rolling back some of the other restrictions we put in place to help try and keep people safe. Uh, the first is that starting immediately, uh, the pastors, Pastor Nikki and I, will be available to head out um, and do home visits uh, with people. Starting on Sunday, February 20th, so that's next Sunday, uh, eating and drinking will again be allowed for groups of 50 or fewer people. Uh, so this does mean that we will be able to have our coffee fellowship time following worship starting uh, next Sunday, February 20th. Groups may also begin uh, uh, meeting again in our building. We had encouraged people who could to meet uh, online, but we are now um, lifting that and uh, people can again return to meeting here uh, in the building as they need to and want to. Our breath-related gr musical groups, so that would be our choirs and our instrumentalists who um, uh, need to use their breath to make, uh, make music, uh, may again resume rehearsals and performances. That is again starting uh, on Sunday, February 20th. We will continue to require people to wear uh, surgical masks or stronger masks like uh, N95s and KN95s. Um, that is the, the current recommendation from the Mayo Clinic that we are going to be following. Um, those offer uh, more protection than, uh, than cloth masks do. Uh, so we will be sticking with that uh, for the time being. Those are the announcements to highlight. Oh, I do have one other announcement. Um, I will be heading on vacation uh, starting this Thursday, um, the 17th. Uh, so if you uh, do need pastoral care um, or emergencies, um, please contact Pastor Nikki. Those are the announcements to highlight for you today. Uh, enjoy the rest of worship and have a great week. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms outstretched. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. We now get ready to share the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of Jesus that he gives to us in the bread and wine. But before we can share this meal, we need to set the table. So make a sacred space and gather up your elements of bread and wine and grape juice as we sing. Now that the table is set, we hear the story of how this holy meal of communion and promise came to be. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And finally, before we eat and drink the Lord's Supper, like we do for all of our meals, we pray. So, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are now invited to share this meal, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you 
and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, you have kept your promise to us in this meal, nourishing us with the gifts of salvation. Fill us with your spirit that we may testify to your goodness, sharing the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus and serving others in your name. Amen. As we come to the end of our worship service today, we remember that Jesus gathers us in worship in order to send us out into the world to share God's love. We are sent out as baptized children of God. And to help us remember this, I invite you to dip a finger in some water if you have some nearby and mark yourself or someone else on the forehead with a cross saying, remember, you are God's child and God loves you. May God, the creator, open your eyes to the needs of your neighbors. Jesus, the beloved, provoke you to unexpected acts of love. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you firmly on the way of justice and peace. Amen. <laughs> to someone this week. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for worship. Have a great week.